Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, of course, our uh, final conversation this morning, just before Wally Scott uh, joins us. Uh, we're now going to be talking energy and, of course, uh, uh, another conversation about refineries here in Nigeria and the federal government's plan to bring them back to life. Uh, we're talking now of a cost optimization program and the federal government's plan to revitalize and repair uh, Nigeria's refineries. Uh, we're joined this morning by Bala Zaka, an energy expert. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, viewers. Okay, all right. Um, um, I'm going to start by asking about the conversation on fixing our refineries, repairing our refineries. We've had these conversations many, many times over decades. Um, should we be excited about this one? Well, we think that we need to economy generally call for excitement and optimism. But we also know we have had a many we have had a many positions from our economic and political leaders to make sure that our economy and when I talk about economy I talk about different sectors of my economy. But the crystallization has already been an issue. We hope the plan to fix our refinery is real, is going to come into crystallization, and uh, if it eventually crystallizes, they will be updated. But if it does not crystallize, I will not be surprised or disappointed. All right, so having a bit of issues with your audio, we hope you can help us speak a little more loud, louder and clearer. But I wanted to ask you about your thoughts. There are other energy experts that have said it's a waste of money for Nigeria to focus on repairing our refineries. Let's just go ahead and build new ones. Do you agree with that? No. Anybody who says it's a waste of uh, money to repair a uh, Nigerian refinery, I don't, I don't agree with the person. I don't. Um, uh, th there's also been conversations in the past about privatizing these refineries, uh, seeing that every other month, you know, the NNPC uh, states how much of Nigeria's money has gone into, you know, these refineries without them producing a drop of oil. Um, is this also a, a time when you should or you will be encouraging the government to get into conversations on privatization of these refineries uh, so that we can achieve a lot more from them? Let, let me be very practical here. See, if we say our health sector is not working, our education sector is not working, our export stream is not working, our economy is not working, and now the environment is not working, then what can imply that the government is also not working? Because you cannot have government working and your health sector will fail, your education sector will fail, and your energy sector will fail. It's not possible. Something is fundamental with the government. If you also say refineries are not working and you need to privatize them, then schools are not working, you need to sell off schools and privatize them, then eventually we also need to privatize the government. Because by exclusion, it means that the government is not working. It's as simple as that. In fact, technology is elementary. elementary. That is what I want everybody to know. There is nothing new or special about refining. It is elementary chemistry. And if refineries are working in other countries, in all opaque countries, and they are working in Nigeria, it is not the concept of refining that is faulty. It is the plan and the management of refining or refinery that is wrong in Nigeria. It is as simple and as practical as that. All right, Mr. Bala Zaka. Um, we've seen situations where, okay, for example, NNPC, it's refineries that's able to produce about 445,000 barrels of oil per day. You know, just does about 20% of that amount, you know, 
way, way less than it should. And time and time again, the federal government has pledged to revamp the refineries, you know, to basically rehabilitate it with the facilities and all of that. But time and time again, these pledges keep falling to the ground. What faith should we have then in this new federal government's plan to optimize costs and repair refineries in the country moving forward? The answer is very simple. If economy is failing, then something is wrong with the economic manager. And if economic managers are doing their work, then who are those sabotaging the efforts of the economic manager? Get for instance, this plan removal of subsidy on the regulator. The only time removal of subsidy work in my lifetime was during Abacha. Regardless of the shortcomings of Abacha, when Abacha attempted to deregulate or oh, he increased the price of petroleum products, he established petroleum trust on PTF. And the current president was even the chairman of PTF then. That was also when we discovered the Okonjo Iwelas. We could see the proceeds of PTF then. That is how we could see what was started by PTF. We could see scholarships. Even this chapter in Abu, we learned as a result of the increase in petroleum, I mean, cost of. Uh, refined product. It was the process that was used to build all those Gorimpa estates. It's clear. Since we came into democracy, it has not been working. It was one story or the other. What if you say the refineries are not working because we are mismanaged? What can you say about the, the, the PID? The same way the PID has not been passed into law is the same way the education sector is not working, is the same way the health sector is not working, and by extension is the same way government is not working, or the government is not efficient, or the government is not effective. I'm not a journalist, so I'm not trying to modify anything, I'm not seeking for any favors, I'm a very straightforward technocrat. All right. I, I, I want us to now talk about the idea of cost optimization. Uh, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Pre Silva, you know, was, of course, the one who stated these, um, uh, trying to reduce the cost, you know, that, um, you know, we put into oil production in Nigeria so we can maximize what we gain from oil production. Um, there's a lot of processes, you know, that need to come into play here. There's a lot of uh, factors that need to be put in place to help us achieve these. Uh, do, do you see that, do you think that these, you know, are achievable in any way, um, seeing the way the structure is with um, um, uh, Nigerian oil production? Well, I can't tell you about the structure of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, but achieving cost optimization is very possible. That was why you call it cost optimization. And when you talk about cost optimization, you simply mean you want to go in explore and produce crude oil in a safe and cost-effective manner. The reasons are very clear. If you want, the first thing that has to happen is when you start, and you are talking about the oil companies in their relationship with the Nigerian government, whether they are international oil companies or local oil companies, the first thing is there has to be transparency in the relationship right from the acquisition of the oil blocks. Then you have to make sure you remove multiple tariffs. Then you have to help some of these companies to make sure you guarantee security in their areas of operations. Then you make sure there is accountability and transparency finished. And once you come up with all this, and their transparency, whatever is the cost per barrel will be the cost per barrel. It's as simple as that. All you need to do is to come up also with what we call, I mean, flow chart system from the beginning to the end of execution. So that if you have any delay or disruption, you can point to that spot, know why you are having the disruption or why you are having the cost rise and do something about it. And if it is genuine, learn your lessons, carry your lessons, 
and see how you can improve in the next operation. That is the principle of cost optimization. All right. So, so many other countries, uh, they've done this, they've tried this, they've done this successfully when it comes to, you know, their oil refineries, oil processing. But we are the largest oil exporter in Africa. But what's the challenge really with us, you know, in regarding getting our refineries working in this part of the world? Practically, in the case of Nigeria, I stand to have debate with anybody, even in front of OPEC or United Nations, is we are having square pegs in round holes. It's as simple as that. But what I'm saying is this. You cannot be having failure in your health system, failure in your education system, failure in your power sector, failure in your oil and gas sector, and you think your government is not failing. No, because you're talking about public institutions. If public institutions are failing in nearly all the sectors, then who are the managers? The manager are the national economy and political manager. Let's be practical. And it's just that when you talk and you see you go to other countries, refineries of 100 years are working. For people like me that have traveled far and wide, when we go for training workshops in those days, we read the same books, we talk about the same principle of refining. The only difference is the human being that have been put in position to carry out these activities. And the question is, this, what is the recruitment strategy? How are people recruited? Is it based on merit or is it based on nepotism or political interest or geographical interest or sectarian interest? You know, also look, we can't keep lying about our economy because we are living in a dynamic world. Even if we lie to ourselves, the bigger world and the social media knows that we are lying. All right. Um, Bala Zaka, uh, wish we had more time to talk about this. Uh, there's obviously uh, a lot of angles uh, with this conversation with regards fixing our refineries, cost optimization, and how we can get the best out of um, our um, oil production here in Nigeria. But we're out of time. But thank you anyway for sharing your thoughts with us and for your views this morning. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. God bless Nigeria. Oh, well. Amen. Amen. Uh, Let's <laughs> now talk sports with uh, Wally Scott, who's standing by to discuss these issues with us. We'll be talking about uh, outrage as the NFF drops in form or Baranozi invites players without clubs for one year. After this break, we'll be right back.